We're talking actors and directors who put on the shows. We're talking playwrights and designers who you'll want to know. From the very first rehearsal to the final curtain call. We, we might, might be off, 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 off Broadway, but we're talking about it all. Because we're two local gals with global pal. It's everything, everything, everything here. With Benita and Ellen. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Everything Theater Podcast Backstage episode. I'm Ellen Cribbs. And I'm Benita Zahn, and I love when we do backstage episodes. It lets us catch up on what folks are doing um, from lo you know, local folks and also stuff that's going on around in theaters all over the place. And a uh, lot, lots going on, Ellen. There is so much happening, and we'll start with our sponsor for this week. Um, Harbinger Theater, in collaboration with Sand Lake Center for the Arts, is doing Teresa Rebeck's, uh, Rebeck's Dig from April 21st through April 30th, and it's uh, their eighth consecutive Capital Region premiere, um, so it's going to be wonderful, directed by Patrick White, um, and uh, I've heard nothing but but raves about it. And I think they got special permission to do this because they're not allowed to have it reviewed as part of their contract because it's such a new play. I can't wait. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the advertisement for it has been beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, so that alone just begins to set the stage. Yep. <laughs> so some crazy stuff um, over in New Hampshire. They were doing a uh, production of The Bodyguard um, it was running uh, the week of, of um, th this event happened on April 7th. Uh, it was at the Palace Theater in um, in Manchester, New Hampshire, which is New Hampshire, which isn't, you know, that big a ride. Yeah. Uh, apparently, a few patrons began singing along oh. with the last song, and that created a tussle. And they saw, one theater goer said, a near riot broke out. They stopped the show. That was it. Yeah. And theater. Wow. I, you know, look, I wasn't there. I don't know how big a deal it was. The, but they were singing and reportedly drowning out the actors. Oh, my gosh. Not a concert, you know. But this is, you and I have talked about this. Right. Yeah. We, a couple of weeks ago with Tom Templeton, we kind of talked about audience reaction and participation that is not quite appropriate. Yeah, and then, you know, are there people who don't understand what it is to be a the in part of a theater audience? Has the pandemic so changed things? Um, but I love that the Palace Theater issued in their statement said, the performance of the bodyguard at the Palace Theater Manchester was stopped at 9.40 p.m. last night and not continued. <laughs> uh, we are disappointed oh. that the last 10 minutes of the show needed to be canceled due to disruptive customers refusing to stay seated and spoiling the performance for others. Mm. So it does sound like that ability to understand the difference between a concert and a show. Yeah, because I mean, there are some shows where they encourage people to get up on their feet. Mamma Mia, right? Everybody's dancing in the aisles at the end. But uh, that's not the norm. No. So, I mean, they have to call the police. Yeah. Yeah. What do you say? But on another note, um, this is Broadway, Broadway. You know, Neil Patrick Harris is returning to Broadway. It'll be in a limited run. Yes. Um, Peter Pan goes wrong. I know. I'm so sad I can't make it while he's there, but I'm definitely going to go. But I'm curious to see what guest star will be there when I go. Yeah. And we should point out, you can't go because, drum roll please. Yes, we're, do, we're opening a Midsummer Night's Dream. It opens, uh, we'll have our first preview thir this Thursday, uh, or sorry, Friday, and then uh, open on the 18th and run through May 7th. And uh, yeah, and well, I'm speaking a little bit about getting people involved. There might be a little bit of that in this production. <laughs> Too said. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, let's, you know, hats off and big applause to Lexi Rabati. She is in the new production of Sweeney Todd on Broadway. And Lexi's, Lexi's an Albany girl. Yeah. And uh, you have so many productions, you know, locally. Just beautiful woman inside and out. A stunning voice. A, you know, I can recall seeing her. I, I think she was maybe, I don't know if she's still in high school. She was in Baby mm. at uh, Slock. She did a couple of shows there. 
She's a Pace graduate, and you know what a wonderful program they have there. So kudos to Lexi. Uh, her family is still local, and uh, bravo, really yeah. bravo. And then somebody who's been a guest with us on more than one occasion, Richard Gada, who you know did swing in Music Man. Mm -hmm. for so long and then landed in the cast full time as swing uh, near the end opens on the 26th of april in new york new york excellent brava yes so break legs and carry on and all the best will be uh keeping tabs on richard and on lexi as well and also waiting to see what uh, charles franklin does next too Mm. And his wife is also in um, Sweeney Todd. So, ah, so it gives me more reason to see it. When I saw they were bringing Sweeney back, it's my favorite musical. And I was very hesitant because I've never seen Josh Groban on stage, but I know his voice is it's gorgeous, but it's very operatic. It's very pretty. And mm -hmm. I didn't know if he had the grit to play Sweeney. But mm -hmm. I have since seen a few trailers and I thought, okay, no, I need to see it. <laughs> yeah. and, and the reviews were a little pleasant. Yeah. You know, some adore him and some felt the same thing, you know, the, as you do. Uh, he did a little movies. more. But yeah. Um, yeah, and having been in the show and then seen it, I think two or three more times, you know, I, I think I might still, but just to see, well, to see Lexi. Yeah. And to see, uh, gosh, road yeah. trip, Ellen. Let's do it. <laughs> lot going on, lot going on. You posted an interesting question this week. Oh yes, about the the props. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever have a prop? You know, props gone crazy. Yeah. Um. You know, I haven't had much bad luck with props. Um. I have made some really cool props that uh when i directed the the mackers uh in chicago i used um i made this cauldron out of wood sticks and it Ooh. was just it was so cool and it was so sad to throw that thing away at the end of the show um i think my, my probably my funniest prop question uh, uh experience was i was in the 39 steps and uh we were in tech week and there's one part where my character's supposed to drink milk and we haven't we had not had any liquid in our glasses and we were not told that they were adding liquid to our glasses so we got to that part in the scene and out they come with this very tall glass of something <laughs> and i had no idea what it was if it was milk if it was substitute milk <laughs> you know colored water no idea and i uh i couldn't get through that scene without laughing because i just <laughs> i was like what am i about to put in my mouth <laughs> how about you uh, the only one that really stays out in my mind was we did Crimes of the Heart. And I was Meg mm -hmm. to the Christmas trash. And, you know, you get to bite into, you know, it's a, like a dozen chocolates. But that wasn't it. It was a birthday cake. They celebrate Lenny's birthday. And it had the most vile red <laughs> icing. You know, the icing was white, but all the decoration was red. And they used the same cake. <laughs> over two weekends oh no need i say more <laughs> i just look at red decoration on the cake and i'm like you know what that reminds me of is in steel magnolias isn't it like an armadillo cake that they have at the wedding that's right yeah <laughs> it's blood mm -hmm. red inside blood red inside i should remember those lines because they were mine an armadillo <laughs> cake it's disgusting <laughs> yeah yeah, that family likes to hunt. No, it was disgusting. Oh, but you don't see the armadillo cake. So for me, it was you know that it's funny. It was both food for you and I. It wasn't like somebody yeah. had to carry a gong. And but food stuffs are really interesting on stage. They are. They're hard on stage. <laughs> yeah. Anybody write in? Anybody share? Yeah, I'm uh, pulling up what we got. Let me see. Da, 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 da. Oh, and while I'm looking at this, um, I will share one more from 39 Steps. There's a part where the clowns, there's two clowns who play numerous roles in it. And uh, at one point, the German bad guy pulls out a, a gun and it's the, you know, uh, climax of the show. And he pulls that out and uh, <laughs> all 
oh, the barrel of the gun just falls clean off. It just <laughs> falls apart in two pieces. And uh, the actor ever on his feet just went German engineering. <laughs> oh, very clever. <laughs> it was like, as a hoot. It got a lot of uh, a good response. You know, they think also many times, at least for me, I tend to put that stuff out of mind. I don't want to remember it. You know, the cake was just so over the top and every night. I don't want to remember it and I don't want to, you know, listen, actors can be very superstitious. We should probably ask that question. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't want to invite in prop trouble. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. you're talking, I'm like feeling there's some out there. I'm going, don't go there. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't go back there. It happens. It's over. It's, on, it's long gone to Mars. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe um, that's what we'll ask the next time is the superstitions, you know? Oh, sure. You yeah. Know, and listen, there are people who won't wash certain items of clothing, yeah. have to wear the same stuff. Every performance have to dress in the same order. Right. Um, you know? Yeah. Uh, we did have a few responses. Um one of which was from Ryan. He said he was doing fully committed and it was a high energy night. <laughs> when isn't uh, it when Ryan is on stage? Right, yeah. <laughs> During the scene when every single phone rang at once, I ran over to the one attached to the wall and with such adrenaline that I proceeded to rip the phone off the wall. Happily, I was able to get it back up, but I was mortified. Um, that actually it, happened in our production of Steel Magnolias. Um, uh, the scene where the phone rings. Uh -huh. And uh, Shelby picks up the phone and the phone came right up the wall. <laughs> she just did like. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, you just got to go with it, right? You're like, truly, what is wrong with your phone? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, Kathleen Carey, who recently was wonderful in um, Typhoid Mary at Theater mm -hmm. Voices, uh, she commented that. Uh, Searching through her memory bank off the top of her head while rehearsing Don't Dress for Dinner at Theater Barn many years back, director Phil Rice gave me a turkey baster and said, during the interview, pull this thing out of your bag. I know you'll find something to do with it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure she did. I'm sure. I'm very lucky. I have no props in Midsummer Night's Dream. That's good. Dealing with the pocketbook is about all I want to deal with. Right. You know, it's it's yeah. easier without. You know, sometimes yeah. you're gobbed up with stuff and you've just got to remember what order to put it all down in. Yeah. And then pick it all up to remember to take everything off. Because I'm sure, you know, you've probably been there too in shows where someone, a, a person, an actor forgets to take their prop off the stage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then you're stuck with, uh, you know, right? yeah, and I've uh similar but a little different. I've had uh plates on stage break, not in a scene that I was in, but it was an Anne Frank, and they had a dinner scene, and they were clearing it up and dropped it, and woo, and had to do happens. a quick cleanup. Yeah, yeah, it happens. You know, it's as you point out, it's about having your wits about you and being in the moment i was having a conversation with someone about acting and you know they're like you know how can you do that and you know and don't you think about other things and ideally you don't think about other things yeah you're in the moment of what you are doing you know does anybody ever now look i'm not equating the two please don't anybody take this the wrong way but does anybody ever ask a brain surgeon so do you think about your vacation to maui while you're you know doing brain surgery i realize you know apples yeah. oranges my point being if you're really doing something that requires your attention and concentration yeah that's what you should be doing mm -hmm. absolutely you know it's I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that goes, we've had this conversation before too. You know, that goes for anything on stage, the set, the costumes, even the lighting, you know, um, a lighting design that doesn't gel with what- Doesn't gel, lighting yeah. design. Oh, Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> <There's a humor. laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a distraction. 
Sure. You know, it's funny. Uh, a couple of summers ago, I was uh, in the production at uh, Playhouse, Park Playhouse. We did uh, Ragtime. Mm. And it was the last night of the show, and there had been a little cold kicking around, and it hit me the last night. Oh. So my throat was, my voice was a little raggy, and I get out for the last number, um, and I'm up. It's two tiered set. I'm up top, you know, and I start singing, and I realize I'm not mic'd. So there's that moment of, you know, Yes, I'm wearing the mic. You know, mm-hmm. uh, yep, the pack is on me. Yeah, uh, feels like the buttons. You know, you're trying to the buttons in the right way, and in the meantime, I'm doing the the mind meld with um our audio guy. And if you've right. been to park, you know, the playhouse and uh, park uh, playhouse in the summer, you know, from the stage to where the audio guy is, you know, it's it's two football fields. I mean, it's a, it's a mm-hmm. whole. And um, I'm thinking. You know, can you find me? Help, help, where am I? <laughs> find the microphone, I'm wearing it. You know, you do it. It's the one time that I can, because uh, ragtime is uh, like any show, you know, you're really in it, but you're singing, you know. Um, he never found me. Oh. At some point you give up, but it wasn't that. We had, let's just say there were 20 cast members and we had 15 mics, and there was an exquisitely elaborate mic swapping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the last night, one of the folks backstage in charge of that got a little sidetracked, goes back to concentration. Yeah. And somebody had come off stage earlier and made a comment about their mic. And I should have thought about it because we were part of the same circuit. He had mis- made a mistake with the swap, like two sw- one or two swaps earlier. Mm-hmm. But it was for a uh, chorus, someone in the chorus. It didn't matter as much. So it was, it, I had a solo, you know. Yeah. But everybody on, involved in the production, to your point, it's focus, focus, focus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So what else have you seen? Goodness, you're rehearsing and you're still getting out. Uh, yeah, well, I saw a whole bunch of stuff right before we started rehearsals. <laughs> um, Confetti Stage did uh, She Kills Monsters, which I fight choreographed. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was a fun, it's an ambitious show for many, many reasons. Speaking of props, oh my goodness, there's a million props in that show, including a five headed dragon that they made with these giant puppets, it was very cool. Wow. A, gel- a gelatinous cube, which they made with P- PVC piping and uh, uh, cling wrap wrapped around it. <laughs> very, very clever. Um, and then all the weapons, which, you know, we had to teach all those fights. Um, there was, yeah. I think there was eight fights or something in the show. You know, not just tiny little things, like decent fights. Um, but no, that was that was great. What else? Um, got out to see Hamilton at Proctor's. Did you? Yeah. Did you see? You've seen it, hadn't you? I have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I this opted time, out. Hmm? Yeah. I opted out this time. Yeah. Yeah. And it was interesting. This was actually my third time, and I found that I was watching different things because I had already been exposed. And so that's always interesting when you've seen a show before and yeah. you refocus your attention. So I was really watching the choreography this time, which is amazing. But a lot of times it requires you to not look at the person singing because, you know, it's all the ensemble doing crazy stuff around them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just a neat show up at um, the Charles R. Wood Theater in Glens Falls mm-hmm. called Welcome Home, Johnny. And it was written by a key, uh, someone you may be familiar with from television um, on Blue Bloods, uh, Robert Cloisey, and his brother, John, who also... I had the good fortune to meet him a couple of years ago in an original show called You Are Here, written by um, Tony uh, Samo, mm. which also performs, and she'd written the show. It was a lot of fun. Did a great, it really mounted a beautiful production, and John was in it and played a mailman, and his deadpan stole every scene when he was <laughs> on stage. But he'd been a boxer. He was a celebrated heavyweight boxer, and he also served in Vietnam. And his younger brother, Robert, Bob, wrote a play about him coming home. Mm. And it's, it also is about their family and growing up. And um, it was a staged reading this past, you know, the past weekend. But what I found interesting when it comes to props is the, the father is a policeman 
and his service weapon plays a role. Oh, yeah, yeah. Except they didn't use a gun. Oh. They did. Interesting. And, uh, you know, I probably should have asked. You had an opportunity. I had a different question. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's... I mean, they were grocery shopping and had real food in the bags. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I guess I see in light of where we are as a country right now with so many mass shootings of saying we don't want to put that on stage, but yet it's an Did integral part to the show. Right. Yeah, yeah. Back in the the uh, you know the fall. Yeah. Um, so I, I would feel like that would take the audience out of it. And anything that takes an audience out of the show, I feel. Is having a real gun would have taken. No, having a, just using the fingers instead yeah. of the real gun. I think people would, you know, be in the scene and I'm going to go, wait a minute, what? Oh, that's a gun. Why aren't they using a real gun? <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I'm with you, especially mm-hmm. since there were other real props. Right. So yeah. that's an interesting choice. It was an interesting show. I mean, mm-hmm, you, mm-hmm. you kept saying, I'm not a playwright. Well, you are. You know, mm-hmm. his, his dialogue was very real. You know, so and props to everybody. Rich Lunello, a local performer, was uh, in the show. A couple of others. Um, now I'm going to say I should have kept my uh, my playbill with me. Uh, drink wine. Is it Ethan Drink Wine? Uh, Not local familiar. performer. I can't think. But lovely, lovely group. Mm. Um, goodness me, Ellen, we're managing to matter away here <laughs> let's let's give the folks um uh at harbinger one more plug it's a dig we'll be playing at the sand lake center for the arts in partnership with harbinger theater it is opening there's a free preview night free theater there's no excuse not to go uh thursday april 20th and two talkbacks with the cast and crew on friday the 21st and friday the 28th it runs till the 30th tickets are only 20 bucks and if you're a student you get 10 dollars tickets um lots of really great talent in here uh so go check it out please so everybody buy a ticket go out see theater go to harbinger go see something a lot of local theater um opening up in the next couple of days you know it's it's not just the flowers that bloom this time Mm -hmm. of year but our stages are so filled with fabulous and interesting and intricate sometimes productions with wonderful performers and and crew Mm -hmm. you're here all those prop masters (laughs) that's right so uh got a couple of good uh, shows on tap for you coming up (laughs) Break legs. Can't wait to see Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, another couple of our other guests have also been on, uh, who are in it. Yvonne Terry is in it. Mm-hmm. Um, David Gerard. Right. Uh, I think we have to get John Romeo on as a guest. Yeah. 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 So John Romeo is in it. And the uh, Broadway's Kevin McGuire. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was an early guest. You know, we yeah. just have to do a little reunion tour. Definitely. Well, I think that's it for us tonight. Um, I'm in between engagements now, and it's nice. Now I have some time to go see everybody. Nice. (laughs) That's you know, it's always a blessing and a curse to not have a show lined up. (laughs) I do have one lined up. There you go. Yeah, it's just not for. I've got a little break. Just a little break. Right then, do you know what you're doing after midsummer? Uh, taking a break. See? <laughs> <laughs> a couple auditions to look at for probably the fall. Yeah. Yeah, a girl needs a little beach time too. Yes, definitely. I am going to the beach. And uh, I think, yeah, with uh, the family, they've been wondering what I look like these days. <laughs> so I've not been around. Well, marvelous as always, Ms. <laughs> Cribs. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks for joining us, spending some time with us. And, um, You know, we're here because we're everything theater. We'll catch you next time. I'm Ellen Cribbs. And I'm Benita Zahn. Thank you so much for listening to the Everything Theater Podcast. 
Special thanks goes out to Alice Grinling for our photography and Justin Friello for composing our amazing theme song. Please remember to subscribe to our podcast and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you want to share your thoughts or what's going on in your theater community, you can reach out to us on social media or through our email at everythingtheaterpodcast at gmail.com. Till next time. It's everything, everything, everything.